Hey guys, it's Jeff and today we are going over battery life and how you can improve it. We've all been using iOS 11 for a while now and throughout betas, official releases, and even minor releases, the most talked about subject in the comment sections of my videos is battery life. So let's go over some battery saving tricks I use on my iPhone 10 and 8 Plus and also teach you some battery health saving techniques as well. Okay, so I kind of break iPhone battery life into three parts. There's phone usage, which is actual use of the phone and what settings are being used during that use. There's data usage, which is data usage in the background or while using the phone. And then GPS usage, which is location services while using the phone or even while not using the phone. So first let's go over to phone usage and head over to the settings app and you might want to match some of the settings I use for phone usage. So first thing is first I go to uh, displays and brightness page and kind of control everything here. Now True Tone is, you know, that's not a battery saving or battery draining setting. So you can leave that where it is. Night shift, same thing with that. Now one thing that you do want to have on is auto lock. Now I typically set it at like one minute or 30 seconds, but for the purposes of this video, I wanted to set it at five minutes just because while I'm filming, you know, you have to make sure that it stays on long enough. So I set it at five minutes. You definitely want to make sure that you have something set here other than never, because if it's set on never, the display will never go off. So um, that will continue to drain your battery and you will have poor battery life. Now, one thing that you can select, I have it selected and it may be a battery draining setting, but so far I haven't noticed a huge hit on battery life and that's raised to wake. So um, typically if you wanna save more battery life, you just turn that off and use the buttons to manage um, turning the screen on or off. But because I use the phone a lot one-handed and I wanna make sure that I can access my phone as fast as possible, I have raised to wake on. So there's nothing else in this menu, but what used to be in this menu was the um, auto brightness feature. So the way to access that is to go to general and then onto accessibility and then onto display accommodations. And you definitely wanna have auto brightness set to on because that is going to control your brightness setting when you switch rooms, go outside, everything like that and manage it properly. If you don't have this set, you could be running a brightness setting on your display that's super, super bright and you don't need it to be that bright. So I've noticed that iPhones have kind of like the best auto brightness. So if you are running with an iPhone, you definitely want to have that setting turned on. So while we're here, you can also go to reduce motion and set that on to basically um, reduce the motion on your screen and save battery life because obviously that motion is going to be using your GPU. So you can do that as well. So that's about it in the settings app. One thing that I want to kind of highlight to you is you definitely want to have Wi-Fi on whenever you can. I'm in the studio here, so I have Wi-Fi on, but when I'm on the go, try to access, I try to access Wi-Fi spots as much as possible. And you should do the same because that really does save battery life. Another thing is airdrop. You definitely want to make sure that this is set to receiving off if you are not using it. If it's set to everyone or contacts only, whatever, um, people can still see you and that will basically drain your battery because it's looking for you and making sure that you're there and it's having to make that connection. So I always have it on receiving off. Personal hotspot, same with that. You definitely want to make sure that is off. Bluetooth, I do have an Apple Watch, so I'm going to leave that on and you know that's typically what I connect to, so it's not um, that much of a battery drain. But definitely cellular data, if you have that on all the time when you're not actually using it, it's obviously going to take a toll on your battery life because it's using data. But most of the time for most users, you have to have that on. So when you're on the go, so definitely leave that on. Um, I'd say just focus on these four settings here. If you don't have an Apple Watch or anything that regularly connects to via Bluetooth, you can turn that off if you want to. Now, if we want to move on to the second topic, there are definitely some more things that you can do in regards to data usage. So let's move on to data and let's go to the settings app and then on to cellular. And you wanna make sure that the cellular options, that roaming is off, and then you can use voice and data for LTE. Now, one other thing that you want to do in regards to data 
is go to the iTunes and App Store page here and make sure that you sell your data for um, automatic downloads is off because that will basically mean that you're going to be using data to download any apps, but using data is going to basically drain your battery. So video autoplay also, you wanna make sure that's on Wi-Fi only because that will be using um, that will be using data. So when you go to the App Store and then on today, um, all these kind of videos that play, those will be playing and using your data in the background. So that will also drain your battery. And obviously there's a lot of um, animations going on here. So you definitely wanna make sure that is turned off. So that's about it with um, the battery saving options here. Um, automatic downloads, I haven't had a problem with that. So I just leave that on. Um, that doesn't seem to be one big setting that you need to change in regards to battery life. Now, one other thing that I forgot about is the mail. Now, you don't actually go here to change what I'm going to change. You're going to be going to accounts and passwords, and you're going to go down to fetch new data, and you definitely don't want to have the push setting here turned on because that will basically push everything to your iPhone when it's, you know, when it's received. So you'll receive several, like maybe after a couple of seconds, couple of minutes, your phone will go and, you know, retrieve that data. So I have everything set to fetch. And even on fetch, it kind of, you know, ask you, do you want it to fetch automatically? And I put manually because that will ensure that all of the mail and everything will be fetched when I want it to. If you have it set to automatic, it will, you know, ask, um, the server to send its data several times. You can have it set to hourly, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, but I'd say that the best is manually. Now, one other thing that you definitely want to check out is the GPS settings because GPS will take up a lot of battery on your phone. So you want to go down to the privacy menu and then on to location services and make sure that you can turn this off to save your battery life optimally, but I have this turned on because I have find my iPhone and all that. And then there's also a lot of apps that um, use my location, which I kind of want it to. So uh, a lot of these you'll see is set to while using. And some of them are set to always basically because the specifics of the app require that it's set to always to access all of the features. So um, very limited amount of apps here are set to always. Now, one thing that you definitely want to um, check on in this menu is the Google app because the Google app and Google Maps app are notorious for getting your location all the time. So you definitely wanna make sure that this is set to while using the app only. If you have it set to always, it will always know your location and it will always be downloading data from your GPS um, inside your phone. So you definitely wanna make sure anything to do with Google is set to while using. So guys, check out all of your apps here. You definitely wanna make sure that most of these are while using and then only for the um, essential apps set to always. So there's one more thing and that's battery health. You definitely wanna make sure that your battery health is good because that will ensure that you have good battery life. Now, one thing that you can do is keeping your phone regularly charged. You can see my phone here is at 73%, but I never let it drop below 40 if necessary. Like if I'm out and it's below 40, that's fine, but it's very rare that I let it drop below 40 because basically when you go to 40 or lower, um, you are wasting more power cycles or more battery cycles. So you definitely wanna make sure that your phone is charged. I did a video using iMazing to kind of feature battery health and exactly what you can do to improve that. So check out that video. I'll have it linked in the description below. If you go to the settings app and then onto the battery menu and then onto the battery health menu, you can see I have maximum capacity still. So obviously these techniques are working because a lot of people, I got this iPhone 10 on day one, a lot of people are already down to like 95%. So obviously what I'm doing is working because I have still maximum capacity on my iPhone 10. Now, another thing you can do is use certified Apple chargers. That goes for both wireless and cable charging. So make sure that you're using certified chargers because if they charge too quickly, um, basically that could hurt your battery life and hurt your battery health. So make sure that all of the chargers that you're using 
are Apple certified. So guys, those are some battery saving and battery health recommendations I have for you. If you like the video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, also get subscribed and hit that bell button. Also comment your thoughts and own recommendations in the comment section down below. I'm sure a lot of people would appreciate your input on this subject. So thank you all for watching, stay tuned, and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace. Thank you.